figured I would uh, take a little bit of time on the game before I made a video like this because we just got a couple of new stages added in during chill season with Brian Water and Flounder. But I feel like I've got enough of an idea here that I can accurately represent at least my opinion on which stages I think are strongest in competitive play overall. Now, this may not be the best idea for a list because realistically, you have to consider the map for each mode. If you're going to try and design a tournament map list, there are some maps and modes that are terrible combinations while other modes on that same map work perfectly fine. Um, but I kind of wanted to just... I'll get my thoughts out, you know, in the, the commentary on it. I want to just put down the maps overall. Um, so, of course, maps that are really good on multiple modes will place a lot higher than ones that are only good on one specific mode. Um, but I'll try to comment on each of those individually as we come upon them. Um, and I think that there are some patterns for, or, you know, that are independent of mode that will really be problems regardless of which one it is that you're playing, or advantages regardless of which one it is that you're playing. So, let's take a look here. So, starting off, we've got Hagglefish. Hagglefish is probably the best of the, the new maps, of the, like, brand new, they made it fresh for this game maps. Um... I don't think that there are any modes here that are especially egregiously bad. Tower control's kind of gross. Uh, splat zones, I think, is fairly solid. It's very hard to push through mid, um, and it's not the easiest to lock out because of how open the court area is, and I kind of like that. Um, Rainmaker is fairly interesting, although the, the shortcut over the top of um, the first checkpoint is maybe a little bit too easy. Um, so, like, all of them have some problems, and I'm not a huge fan of the way mid works. Mid is just way too difficult to push through. The flank routes don't feel like real flanks. It feels like you can often just sit in one spot and watch both mid and the flank at the same time, and it's really difficult to push through there. I'd much rather it be wider and more open than it is, but it's also... It doesn't have such glaring weaknesses. It's not so easy to lock out on it's not so stall heavy as a lot of the other maps there is going to be plenty of action there are opportunities to make things happen so i'd, I'd put this in like the a category probably um I, i'm not objecting to having to play hagglefish in tournaments except maybe tower control hammerhead bridge oh god why did they do this to this map there used to be verticality, and that was a really cool aspect of this map. And then they just, like, took that out. I get, you know, it's a cool idea to say, oh, the bridge is finished now, and so that's why it's completely different. But they made it completely worse. It's supposed to be an improvement on the old one. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, this is all of the problems that we had with Walleye Warehouse, but without the sides that you can drop out there are only two ways to get out of your spawn and it's too easy for a coordinated team to block them off this stage tends to snowball it's one of the worst in the game uh inkblot art academy i think is i'd probably put in about the same place as hagglefish it's not perfect um rainmaker for example there's only one really viable route you can take the rainmaker on there is a second one and it just it just sucks it's slower and not particularly safe either why would you rather do that um so it's not like the pinnacle of map design or anything but um i think that it's solid it's playable you know we've we're used to it and it's fairly popular from splatoon 2 um, it's something where you can't just lock out super easily because there are so many strong defensive points at every stage along the map. You really do have to win multiple fights to be able to push forward. Um, it's fairly neutral, so it's, it's pretty good for competitive play. Um, I just think that it's also not, like, phenomenal. Um, it definitely has some significant weaknesses that, um... 
maybe blowing up a few walls or giving you a little bit more of a way to get up into the enemy bats um, just widening the map a little bit giving you some more options would be nice on this mahi mahi one of the worst stages in splatoon ever um splatoon 3 mahi mahi specifically it's way too small it's way too cramped e-leaders are really really strong here at least you know until they get crabbed or something or missiles get launched there's just nowhere to stand there's not enough cover how are you supposed to take mid except by f doing the boring thing and farming for special and then trying to use overwhelming force on your opponent before they can use it on you it's not a particularly fun tactical map you just sit back until everybody has specials you launch all of your specials at each other at the same time and hope that your specials kill them more than their specials kill you um, really really degenerates at a competitive level in pretty much every mode to that and i do not find it very fun to play mako mart is a perennial favorite lots of competitive players like this i think that Every mode is quite playable. Not all of them are like the best map modes in the game, but all of them are at least in that kind of A tier range. Um, but zones on this map is really fun and really tactical. And you also see some potential for certain weapons to be played that aren't played elsewhere. Um, you, you can see things like uh, carbon rollers popping off on this map. Um, which is really fun to see. Love to see variety in the meta and in enabling that. There are actual flank routes. There are multiple parts of the map that matter, and you can approach it in multiple different ways. Just it feels really good compared to a lot of what else is in the game. Like, for example, Mincemeat, where you have one choke point, which is the middle of the map, which is where everywhere everybody is going to be looking. And that's the way that you have to get to the enemy side. Yes, you could go over the top right, but that's going to be one of the most visible things you can do. And you're going to be dropping down into an area that has no cover. So how do you push on this map? Clam's mincemeat is one of the stalliest things I've ever seen. I've never seen so many Clamplets games go to 100-100 ties that are resolved in like really late overtimes. It's just there's not enough room to move there aren't enough flank routes there isn't enough of a way to get into mid that isn't just easily stalled by someone throwing a fizzy bomb or an e-leader watching everything from the beautiful spot that they're given just really really poorly designed in terms of competitive play and there are parts of this map that i want to love i want to love that the truck area can be painted on three sides and climbed up in all those different ways and you can sneak around but at the end of the day, it just does not lead to very fun competitive matches. Nobody really enjoys having to play this in a tournament set. Museum is one of the best stages in the game. Um, it I like it for every mode. Um, it's one of the most interesting Clam Blitz maps. Um, tower control is a lot of fun. It really forces you to kind of play the tower path and look at the... the most important defensive strongholds and it's kind of good for teaching those concepts because it's fairly linear but that doesn't mean there's no depth to it um i like that mid is big and wide open so it lets the uh backliners play but i like the way that they slope it and add a little bit of cover here and there so that the frontliners can still move around um, they don't feel like they're pinned down for too long because once they get onto the enemy plat they can start engaging um, I'm a little bit less of a fan of the splat zones layout on this map because it has the big zone problem that you saw with Kelp Dome in Splatoon 2, and it also doesn't let you get on the enemy plat as easily, which makes it a little bit more difficult to exist as a frontliner on. Um, but once you're able to, you know, get a fight, then the lockout is very fun, but there's also a lot of counterplay. You've got all of this high ground around. Um, you do have a flank route out into mid. Um, I just think there are a lot of really solid aspects of this that make it more interesting and competitive play, that allow for more variety in play styles and for fairly balanced games that aren't going to snowball incredibly quickly, but that do still reward the team that's doing the best. Sturgeon Shipyard is another one that's up here. I, 
I don't know very many people who have Sturgeon Shipyard as their favorite map, but I I think it's a little bit underrated in that respect. I think that it's like every single mode is fine. Every single mode works well competitively. It enables a variety of different weapons. They, they all have their places that they can go and their ways that they can play it. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the spinner, of the bridge that you can take from mid to get to the enemy snipe. I feel like that is a little bit too strong for the attacking team to control. Um, as soon as they have control of that, it is very difficult for you to push back to mid. Um, and that's probably the biggest thing that I dislike about it. But there are definitely tools for you for doing that, for dislodging those players. And it's a very large map, so there's often just a way to circumnavigate something if it's a problem to you. So I don't think it's a huge issue. And like I said, every single game mode, um, Rainmaker, Tower Control, Clam Blitz, Splat Zones, they all have some really interesting things that change about the map and the way you have to play it but all of its strengths remain the same um, it has solid positions that each weapon can take allows for a variety of play styles it's wide enough to enable flanks and certain tactical plays um, so i think it's it's pretty well made undertow um i actually kind of like undertow I'm, I'm almost leaning towards the a category um but i think it's just a little too small um, especially in mid. mid th this hourglass shape where mid is a massive choke point I think is a, often a problem for maps. And this stage actually has a very novel solution to that in splitting the stage down the middle so that you kind of have two places you have to watch and you can't just throw a single fizzy bomb and cover both of them. But all it takes is someone on either side and it becomes very difficult to push through. Um, so it's not the best competitive map, but... There's a lot of cover that the frontline weapons can use as they push forward, so the backline weapons can't feel totally safe, even though the backline weapons do have a, a couple of pretty strong positions that they can use. Um, so it, again, enabling a variety of play styles is something that uh, I definitely look for. And I don't think that there are any m modes for this map that really cause it to especially break as a result of like where the objective has to push or anything. I really like Rainmaker and how Rainmaker opens up that left-hand side and forces you to use that a little more. That opens the map up a lot more. It creates more flank routes. I think that's definitely a standout mode for Undertow. Um, tower control is really interesting because it forces you to play first to the left-hand side and then the right-hand side on your push. And so it forces both of those areas to be important. Zones is kind of painful because the zones are just too small. They're too easy to cap, and so it's very difficult to kind of push in far enough that you overwhelm the other team and actually get full control. If you do get full control, it's likely to be a lockout, and if you can't get full control, it's just going to be this annoying stalemate where everyone's constantly peppering the zones and nobody ever gets control. So not as, as huge a fan of that one. Um, Clam Blitz is fine, I think. Um, I like, you know, how deep you have to push into the enemy base to be able to score. I think that that makes it more difficult to score and less likely to lead to lockouts. Although you can get into some pretty strong positions while you're scoring, so you can put together really strong ones there. So it's fine. I don't think it's terrible, um, but I don't think it's by any means the best either. Wahoo World by far the weakest of the Splatoon 2 stages. Um, it's got a big problem where mid is just too difficult to get through. Um, it's sort of like Undertow's problem, except unlike Undertow, where you slip through mid in like three seconds, in Wahoo, it's going to take you like a full player's respawn timer to get from your side of mid to their side of mid. Um, and the entire way, like, nothing is really that safe. Everything is very visible. You have to walk across a lot of glass or take a lot of low ground and then climb a wall to get anywhere on that map. Um, if we were to just, like, destroy the buildings on either side of mid and, and open up some space there, this would be a phenomenal stage. They're, like, they're, there's a lot to like about it. Um, but all I can give it is that there's a lot of wasted potential here. Tower is still a stall fest. 
Um, the tower should have a really hard time getting down into mid, and it's better now, but not that much better. Um, Rainmaker is painful because how do you get the Rainmaker out of mid? It just it's such a disadvantage to have to be in mid and exist there when you're being shot at from all sides, and it's just not safe to push forward. Um, zones is definitely the best of the modes and is definitely still viable. Um, I think it's not the worst thing there to have mid be difficult to approach because mid is the objective, and so you should have to force your opponents out of it. Um, but it's also a mode that puts your spawn area, your uncontestable high ground, really close to the objective. So you can often just, like, get in with one special push. It doesn't really take you forcing the enemy team out so much. Um, so it can be easy to retake, but if you don't play it exactly right, if you don't, you know, play very boring and farm your specials and then launch them all at once... It can be a lockout map, and it can snowball pretty badly, so eh, not a fan of Wahoo. Eel Tail, ugh. Eel Tail is definitely, I would say it's solidly lower than Wahoo World. Eel Tail, I don't want to put it down quite as low as, like, Mahi, but it is a very problematic map. It's way too skinny. There are just not enough ways forward. It has a lot more verticality to it, which I think puts it well above something like Mahi or Hammerhead. Um... But at the end of the day, again, you just don't have enough flank routes. You don't have enough of a way to push in. A single choke point is held too easily by something like a crab tank or a sloshing machine. So, not great. Uh, Scorch Gorge, I think, also falls in the same category. There's a mode or two that I kind of like Scorch Gorge for. I think Clam Blitz is actually pretty decent. Um, because in Clam Blitz... The biggest problem, the thing that I dislike the most about Scorch Gorge is how big of a choke point you have trying to come around the enemy's snipe. Um, that choke point is disgusting. I, I hate that it's there in the map. I hate that none of the walls into the enemy side are paintable, that you just have to go around the right-hand side and that's your only option. That's so lame. There should be other ways in. And don't give me, oh, but there's a grate on the left on some of the... It's a great bridge. It's one of the most defensively bankrupt positions you can take to be on a great bridge you can be hit from every side you're very visible you're a bigger target than you are when you're in squid form and you're moving slowly that's that's not that good of an option um and against such def defensive strongholds too that you have to push in against so ugh, i'm not a fan um but clam blitz solves that problem by making the choke point the end point of the objective push that you have to make. That's as far as you ever have to go, getting into the choke point, not even getting through it. Um, one of the other gross things about the map is that when you do get control of that choke point, you actually have the advantage over the enemy team. And this is a huge problem in tower control, that once you get the tower past second checkpoint, it's very hard for them to actually defend effectively. Because the only high ground they have is very exposed and often far away from the tower, you have to drop down into this pit that they will have high ground over if they're standing in the second checkpoint area. Um, it's so weird how they put you at such a disadvantage when you're the defending team in that position there. Same kind of thing can happen in Rainmaker. Um, I don't get why they did that. In Splat Zones, they avoid the problem entirely by just making it absolutely frickin' impossible to get into the enemy side. I, again, I don't know why they're doing this. This is a game that is built around the concept of painting a wall and being able to swim up it. Why can't we swim up any of these walls? Why do we have to walk across this rickety bridge to almost certain death if we want to even move past the middle of the map? Um, it also has a problem of being a very big zone and being difficult to cap at once, um, kind of the kelp dome problem. I'm really not a fan of that part, but I will still give it that it has some modes that are okay, that are like, okay, I'll still play this. Um, and I do not feel that way about any of the, the those in the uh, tier below it. Uh, Brinewater. Brinewater I'm going to put in the same place as Undertow. Um, I think that this is not the worst uh, by any means. It's definitely very mid. Um, it's... It's very much Hammerhead Bridge, but with one major improvement. 
And that one major improvement is that instead of being a straight line, it zigzags. And the zigzag is a zigzag that you can cut. You can cut the corners. You can go around and, and drop straight out of your spawn to get out the left-hand side if you want to. Um, and that single-handedly improves the stage massively because it gives you a lot more tactical options. There is actually a flank route on this map. Um, there are some interesting tactics that you can go into because of the way that the different paths intersect with each other. Um, but it is still fairly narrow. It is very small. It's a pretty nasty lockout map. Um, so I'm not a huge fan of it or anything, but I think it's a tier above the ones below it. Um, I think that that interesting tactical depth there gives it at least something. And I'm very curious to see how this map will play once the game is less of a crab rave. And finally, we get to Flounder Heights. Um, I'm going to put this up pretty high. I think that Flounder is really cool. Um, I think it definitely has some problems, but I also think that it's better than most maps. Um, Flounder, the, the nice things that I like about it are that it has a ton of flank routes, it, and it's got so much verticality, and the walls are actually paintable. Remember how I was complaining about that with Scorch Gorge? Brinewater is actually worse. Uh, in Brinewater, there is only that little block whose walls you can paint in mid. And again, this is a game about being able to move wherever you want because you can paint everything. And Flounder Heights is the only stage that actually fully lives up to that ability. Um, granted that, you know, there are some places where I'm okay with a wall not being painted for balance reasons, but Flounder is really cool in that it's fairly balanced while still allowing you to go pretty much wherever you want to go. Um, and I think that's super cool about it. Um, it's not the best for backline weapons, and so it loses a few points for that, where there are only so many places that they can stand that they like. Um, they've got basically the, the snipe air conditioners, and they've got maybe like at the top of the, the plat wall, but that's kind of about all you, you want to put a backliner on, because there's just so many positions that they can be sharked from. Um, and it might not be as fun to play a backliner on this map, but... I also really like the way that it incentivizes creative movement and creative ideas for how to traverse the map. Um, I like the emphasis on the verticality of it, that um, the map is made more complex for in a denser area by having the high rise that you can get up to and by being forced to make the tactical decision, is it worthwhile to drop off this wall to chase this or should I stay up here to maintain high ground advantage? Um, I generally like the way that the objectives are forced to push through the map. One thing that I think is a little bit of a problem with it that kind of carries over from stages like Moray Towers is that it's, it takes a really long time to spawn back in and actually get into the match. Um, it's a stage that really incentivizes beacons in a game where there isn't a very good standout beacon weapon. The best you're honestly probably talking about is the Dapple Dooleys. Um, which is not, the, you know, the first thing that anyone's thinking to try and run. So I think if there's a, a better Beacons weapon that comes out, it's going to be incredibly powerful on that map, just because of how much the sight lines are cut and how much time it will save getting you back into mid. Um, but uh, one other criticism that I do have about this map that keeps it, um, you know, down in the tier that it's at is that there are some modes where you can kind of snowball into the enemy side. Um, tower control in particular comes to mind. Once you get to the top of the enemy ramp and you're coming down, that's just a really dominant position for the pushing team. It's very hard for the defending team to even do anything about that. Like, how do they get to the tower? There are two ways that you can do it. You can go up the ramp wall or you can go up the ramp itself. Neither of those are safe. Everyone on the enemy team is going to be looking for that exact sort of play. You can flank behind the ramp, but that's even more visible because you have to paint all the way across street to get to that wall, and then it's going to take time to get up the wall, and then maybe someone's still looking backwards and looking at you, you know? So I don't like that particular part of the map. I don't like how it descends so rapidly, how it gives so much high ground to the pushing team once they get past mid. Um, and that's something that keeps it out of there for me, but... Out of, you know, all of the maps in the game, 
you're not hurting too bad, I think, if, if you're running Flounder Heights. Um, so those are those are my hot takes there. Um, I'm sure there's gonna this is gonna rake up some controversy, but uh, I'm I'm happy to hear out other people's opinions on this and uh, see what everyone else is thinking about which of these you would like to play in a, a tournament setting. So thanks for watching, everybody. There's my tier list. Um, enjoy fighting in the comments about uh, whether you agree with it, whether you agree, agree with my reasoning. Um, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.